Do you ever have your partner just kind of stare blankly at you when you're trying to explain something? Were you with maybe an ex that never could seem to understand what you were going through? Maybe you're with someone where you try to explain, you try to walk them through like this is the thoughts or the feelings or the mindset I have in this particular situation and they would never connect. Did that ever happen to you? You might be dealing with someone who has some narcissistic traits or narcissistic personality disorder because a lot of times they can't engage on that level. They can't actually connect with what the other person is feeling. You might be wondering how I know that. Well, if you haven't followed me by now, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. Provide awareness to a lot of people to understand like what narcissism is, like how it actually breaks down. And we're going through like a couple different like red flags and thoughts of what narcissism is and also like different quirks or different things that you'd see uh, narcissistic people like struggle with or what you'd see kind of prevail in those types of relationships. I've been working with people now for a bit of a time where I try to be able to work with them to get to the place of healing and growth. And a lot of that is done in the mind. A lot of it is done through working through what you're feeling, the emotions that you're going through, and ultimately the story that you're telling yourself. Because we're all made up of the stories that we believe, and some of those stories are passed down to us generation to generation. Some of those stories we grew up with by our family or our friends. Other stories are given to us by the religious institutions we go to or the schools that we grew up in. Ultimately, these stories end up impacting us in multiple different ways that oftentimes affects our perspective of the current situation. This might be the person that because of their religion is staying stuck in an abusive relationship. Or it might be the person who has to prove to the family a certain aspect about the relationship so they stay in it even though they know it's abusive. Oftentimes, people will stay in a relationship longer than what they actually should because they're dealing with a trauma bond. And that trauma bond is very confusing. It makes the other person feel crazy because it's almost like the aspect of like Stockholm Syndrome where you're stuck and you're falling in love for an abuser or you're infatuated with someone who's causing you harm. Well, with the trauma bond, it carries on even after you're with that person to often be when you're going through the stage of like detoxing from getting away from that addictive ex, you're trying to figure out like, wait a second, like why do I still miss them? Why do I still care for them? Why do I still love them? Why do I still want to go back? And a lot of times people struggle with the thought and understanding that they're stuck in that type of a trauma bond and they're not sure how to get out. So when I work with people, we walk through the triggers, the emotions, the feelings, the facts to be able to get to a place of saying, hey, this is the reality that's actually there based on facts, based on the truth of the situation, because the truth is what's going to set you free and try to help people get out, get happy, get healthy, get healed, and continue on their journey. I have the privilege of being able to work with a lot of different people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we also do live events. So on Wednesday nights, I'm um, either on this channel on YouTube uh, under Raw Motivations or we're on Mental Healness channel uh, talking with Lee doing question and answer time. Wednesday nights, 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern time. Or you can visit back either on this or on the other platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and here on YouTube on Thursday nights from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern time for both of those. We also are doing exclusive lives in Inside the app and we do have an app called the NARC app it's NARC narcissistic abuse recovery community we're doing lives exclusively inside the app is for people to be able to come on there where they understand it's a safe environment and they can ask questions even on current situations that they're in and it's not going to be out there on the internet it's there for people inside the app to be able to understand to be able to learn to be able to grow to be able to ask questions be able to connect with community in there and ultimately be able to heal and continue on their life establishing good solid boundaries and goals, vision and values as they're looking forward to who am I going to be? How am I going to live my life as I continue forward? So I'd love to have you part of that community if you want to check that out. With the types of people that I'm talking about, so toxic people, narcissists, psychopaths, sociopaths, whatever you want to call them. Now, a lot of times you get to the place where you're trying to communicate a thought or an idea or especially when it comes down to it, an emotion of, hey, what you did just made me feel this way. Did you have that moment where you're communicating stuff and it literally seems like you're talking to a wall, like it's just like blank and they're not getting it. They're not getting the ideas and the concepts that you're putting forth. And it could be really frustrating because you're like, why in the world is this person not understanding me? 
Over a period of time, you start to think like, maybe they're not understanding because I'm the abnormal. Like I'm the, the one that's messed up. I'm the one that there's something wrong. Maybe I'm actually oversensitive or I'm, you know, blowing things out of proportion and all these different things that get put on you based on the story that they're telling you about yourself. The problem is it's not anything about you. It's actually on them being able to emotionally and mentally like process some of these things. You see, it's typically that a lot of people know that narcissists don't have empathy or according to DSM-5, they lack empathy or they're unwilling to acknowledge another person's feelings or emotions. In some cases, that means that they have empathy and they understand empathy, but they are purposely not giving that empathy to the other person. So the other person might be trying to communicate, this is how you hurt me. This is how I feel after I just caught you cheating. This is how I feel after you just yelled at me and all these different types of things. And the other person is like, they just don't get it. Now it could be like completely blank face, like I'm not gonna respond to you at all. Or it could be like, sure, I understand. Or like, yes, I'll work on that. And then nothing changes. So there's a couple different scenarios at times that will happen. But a lot of times that blank stare leads back to the idea that they're not able to connect or put themselves in your shoes. They're completely different than how might you might relate to things going on in society, to things that make you worried when you watch TV, or to a friend that just had like a breakup, or to someone else that they just got puppies. Like you feel different things for those people, or you connect on like an emotional level. Oftentimes these are people that are very empathetic or sometimes called as empaths. There's different levels, I guess you'd say. But when this happens with a toxic person, narcissist, sociopath, psychopath, like they don't have that connection. They don't build that connection with you because they have not had the chance to be able to emotionally mature and how they deal with their feelings. Narcissists do have feelings. The thing is they don't have the emotional maturity to be able to regulate those and to be able to keep those in check or learn how to actively express those in a positive way. So a lot of times because of abandonment, rejection, shame, all these different types of things that are underlying narcissism, they refuse to actually open up those sections of themselves to give any type of empathy, to give any type of understanding, to give any acknowledgement of what the other person is going through. It's very hard for them to kind of take that mental process and place themselves in another person's shoes. So for me, for instance, whenever my wife is going through something that is hard or that she's struggling with or she's upset about, that doesn't connect with me on the same level that it would for someone else. So someone sees that and they're like getting teary eyed because she's crying or they're getting like frustrated because she's angry and all those different types of things. And I'll look at it. But from the outside looking in, I look at it more of like a logical standpoint of like, well, you're crying because this happened. Well, don't do this and then you won't be crying. Like it's always like that mental kind of jigsaw puzzle of like, we'll do this and it fixes this. Do this and then we don't cry. Do this and then you're not upset. Like all this different type of stuff trying to like fix the problem or trying to get to a certain place. But ultimately when it came down to it, whenever she would have those emotions and try to get me to understand what she was feeling, what she was thinking, it wasn't there. It didn't connect with that. It didn't understand that. Now, growing in self-awareness, I've gotten to the place where I understand more about empathy. I understand more about cognitive empathy. So there's times when I know this is the support she needs, or this is the words that she needs to be able to help work through this situation. And knowing that I can actually make that choice to be able to help support and love her. But I didn't always do that. And what I would do is when I'd get in those moments, they would work up to such an emotional frenzy, to such an emotional chaos in one sense, I get to the place where I would literally just shut down. And I wouldn't engage, I wouldn't interact. So she'd be there crying, upset, frustrated, whatever it might be. I'd try to engage for a moment maybe, if I was like feeling like decent about it. If it didn't fix it right away, so like come up, give her a hug, and then she keeps crying. And I'm like, well, why do you keep crying? Like this is supposed to like fix the problem give her a hug she keeps crying I'm like I don't know what to do there's that moment of like almost like panic of like I can't fix this like nothing's gonna change these emotions are gonna, still gonna happen I don't know how to deal with these so typically then I get to the place where I'd shut down typically you have a narcissist that either shuts down um, or yells or accelerates the problem and oftentimes I do either one I would shut down or I would yell at her because I'd yell because the problem wasn't getting fixed 
and try to blame the other person, blame another action. But ultimately, like what was wrong was maybe because I did something wrong or maybe she's hurting about something and I couldn't fix it. So as a result, I would get frustrated. I would get more mad in one sense, which wouldn't solve the problem. Other times I would just completely shut down. Like you just be at the point and be like, this is too much. I can't handle this. Go completely like silent and just like walk away and be like, nothing I can say is going to fix it instantly or is going to handle it. And I don't know how to emotionally be able to handle another person's emotion. So as a result, I would shut down my emotion. I kind of compartmentalize it, kind of box it up and walk away knowing, hey, give it some time. She'll eventually get it back under control and be back to normal. The problem is none of those are healthy responses. Being able to learn now as a self aware narcissist and work on myself is where I can actually have that cognitive empathy and work on developing that idea of like, hey, what would this actually be, you know, if I was in her shoes? How would this actually experience this if I was in her place? Typically, a narcissist doesn't want to engage with that type of thought process because it has them pull outside of themselves, run past the ego, and actually look at life from another person's perspective. That's hard because one, that's not ego driven, and two, that's not black and white thinking. And narcissists want to be able to focus on that. But when they're able to actually take that and look at it through the eyes of like cognitive empathy and seeing how someone else can interact, that's when you know you're actually talking to someone who cares and who interacts. Narcissists don't do that. They don't connect in that way. So if you're dating, if you're in a relationship, if you're married, if, if whatever, and you're noticing that the other person across the table is not understanding when you're trying to get them to see things from your perspective or to feel like in your shoes, there could be like a red flag there. Something to keep an eye on.